Oh, go on YouTube. Blue Color Finance Day are with the next gym. But before we start the video, I beg my subscribers then to please like the video. Because according to YouTube, 80% of my subscribers them are watch the videos, but them not like the video. So I beg you like the video and share the content. And for those of you who have not already subscribed to the channel, I beg you to subscribe to the channel and help the channel grow. Alright, so I'm there with the next gym and we are going to read from The Stock Market Miracle by Wayne Cook. Alright, so the last couple of videos we did, uh, we look at strategies from this said book and we promise that we will continue looking at some of the gems that, this, that is embedded in this book. Alright, so a little bit of revision. Alright, so in the last video, we look at two famous or popular sentiment that is very popular among retail investors in the local market. Alright, and we try to debunk those or to rubbish those, to garbage those because they don't make no sense. And we're sure where Wade in his book is debunking those popular sentiments all right so i could just revise two of those sentiments that will um we debunked in the last video and we are going to look at this new one that wade also does not agree with all right so the first one um is the sentiment that says you are to buy stock high and sell them even higher all right now just by looking at it it makes sense all right, to buy stock high, sell them higher, then you will make a profit and it's all good and sundry. However, what we is saying is that it is very stupid to buy stock high. All right, so buying stock high is one mistake that you would have already made. Now, the second mistake that you are going to make is hoping that somebody come and buy the stock from you at an even higher price. All right, so you make a mistake and your hopes that somebody make the same mistake or even a worse mistake than the one that you make that is a very risky strategy all right so you being stupid and i hope that somebody in the market is more stupid than you are and it might just be that you are the stupidest person in the market for buying the stock high and now you're left with a high value stock that has a high probability of falling off in price all right so that's a, um, an idea that I do not want any subscriber on Blue Color Finance to believe in. All right, so Wade in the book, remember, we said that Wade said buying stock is like a business and you are to treat it like a business. And business people don't go around buying goods high and selling them for a higher price. That's the recipe for disaster. All right, so what did Wade say? Wade say you are to buy stocks at wholesale price just like the businessman does, all right, and sell them at retail price. That is selling them at a reasonable price. And if you are doing that, you will be able to beat the competition, make comfortable profit, all right, without taking a lot of risk. So the idea of buying high and selling even higher is a risky idea the business um approach is to buy wholesale and sell retail all right so get that out of the way the other sentiment the other popular belief in the local market is the one that says that a stock is worth what somebody else is willing to pay for it all right so that's another popular belief and that's one that we also attack and prove that it doesn't make any sense all right so according to Wade again that idea holds well in the retail market but it breaks down in the stock market all right so in a all in the stock market believing that the stock is worth what somebody is willing to pay for it cannot all in the stock market all right so 
let me try and explain it a bit why it holds in the retail market i mean the real estate market all right but doesn't hold in the stock market all right so if you're selling a house in the re real estate market you only want one buyer somebody who is willing to buy one somebody who is willing to buy and you will be able to sell your house and get out of the deal all right get out of the real estate market however in the stock market it could be that you have person willing to buy at a certain price but that's not the problem the problem is the amount of shares that the person is willing to buy at a certain price is less than the amount of shares that you are selling all right so what will be the end result is that you will end up having more shares that you cannot offload however person are willing to buy at that said price that you're willing to sell but it's just that they are not buying the entire block of shares from you all right so saying that something is worth what it persons are willing to pay for it doesn't hold in the stock market so as i just proved you will be left with stocks that you cannot sell overvalued stocks that you cannot sell and stocks that are likely to fall in price so people are willing to buy at the overvalued price but they are not buying the entire block of shares all right so you know will be left with some shares that are overvalued and that will fall in price so that again doesn't make any sense all right so again we garbage that idea you know make the sense in the stock market it holds in the real estate market but it doesn't hold in the stock market all right so we can move on to the third one that is revision so revision over all right so what we are try to do is to continue to beat these concepts in your head all right beat these concepts in your head repeat these concepts on the station on the channel so you get used to them put them in your sub in your subconscious in your psyche so you operate and perform with on the basis of those concepts all right um let's move on to the third concept the third popular belief that i hear a lot of people repeating in the local market that doesn't make any sense but for some reason it finds its way in the local market and a lot of people keep repeating these things people who are not exposed to a lot of different ideas uh, financial different financial ideas so anybody with them ear talk them just grab on to whatever the people they must say without even thinking for themselves all right because they do not read a lot so they do not have a lot of um ideas to debunk different ideas and that is the power of reading and that is the reason why i'm telling you that you need to read a lot of books all right whether or not a finance book political book science different topics because what reading does is to give you different ideas so you can debunk all right different concepts all right so what we're searching for is ideas all right so this other idea now that the market is always right i know you hear that somewhere already you know that the market is always right think about it is the market always right now let we read what we said in the book all right now the first time i hear somebody on the local market said that i believe the idea was an original idea and i know that you believe that idea was an original idea because the person never gave credence to anybody all right so the person said it as if he created the idea but here it is that weird 
in this very book is disagreeing with that said idea. All right. So what it means is that this idea has been around for a long time. Let me read what Wade said. There is a widespread belief that the market is always right. I disagree. There are too many variables. The market is not always right. So there you go. We had said it, I'm saying it very clear. The market is not always right. When it comes to a particular stock, there is definitely too much sentiment to come to any conclusion that a stock price is right. All right, so there you go. We had not believing that the market is always right. So what he's saying is that there are so much variables that helps to determine the stock price. And as a result of those variables, um, people concluding that the market is always right are just people that are afraid to look at the different variables, try to understand the different variables, all right, and understand the correlation among the different variables to get a better understanding of the price of the stock. And because they are afraid to do this hard work, then they, they, they want to shortcut the journey and just say that anything the market say is right, all right? So, that sentiment, the market is always right, is simply people afraid of doing the hard work that finance entails. All right, and they are looking a shortcut. And as a result, them just say the market, anything the market say, that's the answer. That's that's right. All right. One more other thing: why Wade does not agree uh, with the sentiment that the market is always right is market sentiment and when we talk about market sentiment we are talking about the emotions that you have when you buy stocks all right so sometimes you buy the stock and you know because it's your money that you're putting on your line all right you you develop a lot of emotions towards these stocks all right and you really want to make money all right so you stop thinking rationally now there's a lot of emotion running through your body and this emotion can distort um, the, the, your decision, all right? So the emotions, the sentiment distort your decision, and as a result, you might make a wrong decision. But the market is built up of participants just like you, people who are emotional, people who have a lot of sentiment, and they are making irrational decisions also. So when you put one irrational decision with another irrational decision and you have a lot of irrational decision, the outcome will also be an irrational decision. All right. So because it's human beings that are in the market and human beings tend to have irrational decision, make, I'm sorry, human beings tend to make irrational decisions because of their emotions, because of their sentiments. All right, this means that the stock price, which encapsulates the group think, encapsulate the market movement, the market decision, or the herd decision, all right, that stock price tend also to be wrong at times. All right, so there you go again. The stock price is not always right. All right, so let me break it down another way a very simpler way so you can understand when women go to supermarkets or go to or go shopping you realize that women normally shop around for cheaper price or for better bargain all right now people tend to believe that women are not rational thinkers however this shopping around that woman does when they go to the supermarket or when they go shopping is based on the idea that the market price is not always right all right so it is based on the idea that the market price is not always right so when them see somebody else sell something else they might go down there so just a block away 
I might get the same product, the same quality product for half of the price. All right. Now that said analogy, let us extrapolate that and bring that over to the stock market. Now the woman in the uh, the woman in the, the the story in the analogy represents investors. All right. So the woman that goes to the supermarket represents investors that are going to the stock market. The woman shopping around for bargains represents investors that are researching companies for bargains. All right. So it's the very same thing. So if the woman um, based their action on the fact that the market is not right. These people, researchers that are researching companies, also are of the belief that the market is not always right. And that's why they are shopping around. What is very contradictory is that the same persons that say that the market is not right they are the one doing the research and they are spending extensive hours researching companies. Question is, if the market is not right, or sorry, if the market is always right, why are you researching companies? Why are you res doing research? All right, it doesn't make any sense. If the market is always right, you should go in the market and purchase any stock. Because you're getting a good price. You're getting the right price for the stock. Alright. So that's just some idea. Or ideas to prove that this market. This sentiment about the market is always right. Is not right. Alright. So the last thing before we close off on this video. Is... The same persons that you hear talk about the market is always right. You will also hear them talk about the market correction. Again, that's a contradictory statement. Because if something is always right, how then can that something be corrected? So people who believe that market is always right should not be talking about market correction. If the market is right, why would the market need to correct itself? It means that the market must have been wrong sometime. All right. Now, as I said, I will continue. It's a series that we're doing. And every now and then, I will continue to drop gems from this book, Stock Market Miracle, written by Wade B. Cook. All right, and this is the very first book that I read as somebody who is interested in finance. So I'm just going to share my experience, my financial journey with you, my valid subscribers, and I hope you learn something from it because trust me, there are lots of gems in this book and a lot of gems that will debunk some of the myth that you have gotten so used to and that you continue to re, um, repeat and that is in your subconscious all right and this can prevent you from becoming wealthy in the stock market now as you know blue color finance and you don't know how the thing go over here and i will always say subscribers remember like the video before you stop watch it and if you are not a subscriber subscribe to the channel we are weird for. You know you like blue color finance. Me chat to you.